a day in the life of a materials engineer. As an internship at the same company as my design engineering internship was at, this internship day starts in a very similar way. 7.30 a.m., I'm starting my daily commute to work. 7.50 a.m., I arrive at the gate to work, show my badge to the security guard, and pass on through. After arriving at my building, different building from the one design engineers sit in, I ascend to the third floor, turn on my desktop, and check my emails. As a materials engineering intern, I usually do not have too many emails, and have just a few tasks on my plate at a time. Here is where the work really gets different. As a materials intern, I spend my days in one of the five different labs in the building for analyzing material or at my desk. Throughout my days, I spend more time away from my desk than at my desk. My work tends to follow a storyline, which begins far away from my company's location, with equipment failure out in the field. Chapter 1. The equipment failed in some way. We first can categorize the failures into one of two groups, catastrophic or gradual. In a catastrophic failure, there would be some type of explosion, miniature or grand, and some representative of our company would show up on the scene of the crime to perform an initial investigation. Once they had found an area that seemed to be the source of the problem, they would ship all related components to the materials engineering department. In a gradual failure, the parts would wear over time, perhaps making it all the way through the period of intended use. Then at some disassembly, some excessive or odd wear would be noticed on the parts and the customer would send the parts to our company. Once the parts made it inside the company's gates, they would find their way to the materials engineering department. In the materials engineering department, various types of tasks would usually be split between lab technicians and materials engineers. As a materials engineering intern, I got to perform all of the functions, as learning a lab technician's job is considered crucial for a good materials engineer. For the purposes of this video, I'll label the jobs with their corresponding title as I talk through them. Chapter 2, The Inquiry Begins. A materials engineer, or the materials engineering manager, gets the scoop on Chapter 1, finds out why the parts were sent, and defines the question or questions being asked about the parts. Then, depending on the parts and the questions being asked, various levels of fun begin. Chapter 3, if the component needs to be cut from a large size to a small size, it would be taken down to the cutting and machining lab. In this lab, components that could not be fit into the mounting press would be sawed down to size, sparks flying, heavy metal squealing, and all the glories of sawing metal that go with it. Any sharp corners were then ground off to prevent injury, and the final piece under question would be mounted using a mounting press. Follow the link in the description to see more about the mounting presses. After the press completed its job, the mount would then be polished such that not a scratch could be seen on the surface of the mount. Then the mount could be taken to the microscope or hardness tester for analysis. Photos through the microscope could be taken for use in a report, and data would always be collected for the engineering report. If the material did not need to be cut down to size or mounted, several other tests could be done for analysis. An ultrasonic or UV test could be for performed on the component to check for cracks inside the part or on the surface of the part. The part could be placed on an SEM for nanoscopic surface imagery or analysis. The part could be tested for material makeup using the classic spectroscopy. The part could be taken into a lab for cleaning using a grit blaster or heating using a 1000 degree industrial oven. Last but not least, the part could simply be imaged using a system that allows for 3D image compilation. Chapter 4. Back at the desk, I would take the collected information and images to analyze the defects and create a report. The report would point out the defect, the starting point of the defect, and an interaction between the material's properties and its defect. The presentation would then be sent or shared with the customer or relative interested parties. If further information was requested, more studies would be done, the report would be revised, and so forth. One day would include just one or two of the steps described above. I remember two whole weeks where all I did in the day was take 3D images of a particular section of 100 identical components. The photos were used for comparison and confirmation of the statistical presence or absence of a defect.